going to finish off the book. Let me say that again. We're going to finish off the book with a discussion of the effect of taxes on net present value. And if you've been through the appendix, you might say, wow, this looks complicated. But it is actually a two-step process. It is very easy. But before I get there, I've got to explain to you exactly what's going on here. So net present value of taxes is a little bit complicated since net present value uses cash flow, but taxes are paid on accounting profit. So when we look at our cash flows, we have to say, well, that's not necessarily profit. We don't pay tax on that. And some things that are not included in, in cash flow, like depreciation, are deductible for tax purposes. So when we think about it at, f at the front of the discussion, we start thinking, this sounds really complicated, but it actually really isn't. So let's keep in mind that cash flow does not equal net income. Those are two different things. So we have expenses and we have benefits. Our after-tax cost of an expense our tax deductible expense, not all expenses are tax deductible. We need a tax deductible expense. I shouldn't say that, sorry. Not all cash outflows are tax deductible expenses. So one minus our tax rate times the taxable deductible expense is really our only cash outflow. So let's say that I have an expense of $100 that I have to pay. Because I have to pay that $100, that $100 is deductible from my income for tax purposes, and if I pay 30% tax rate and I take $100 off my income, it actually saves me $30 in tax, so that my after-tax cost is only 70 bucks. That's all that's saying. On the other hand, our after-tax benefit is not as high as we think it is. If I earn $100 extra in my business and I pay 30% tax, I really only get to keep 70 of that, 30 of it goes to the government, so my after-tax benefit is one minus the tax rate times the taxable cash flow. So let's keep this in mind. The idea of a tax deductible expense and the idea of a tax taxable cash flow. And when we get to adjusting our cash flows, we'll see how really, really simple this actually is. Okay, so let's leave that. Let's deal with what we can't see in our cash flows, which is our depreciation. Well, here we have another problem because depreciation for accounting purposes may not be the same as depreciation for tax purposes. So even though we may straight line, uh, uh, take straight line depreciation on an asset over 10 years and write it down to zero, our government might say, ah, 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 you have to use this rate, which means you're not going to depreciate it fully in 10 years. You got to use our rate, not your own rate. That's called a CCA, a capital cost allowance. We call it depreciation when it's on our books. We call it a capital cost allowance when we're reporting our taxes. Well, if we have a deduction for capital cost allowance, that deduction saves us tax. In other words, we can call all of the deductions throughout the life of that asset our tax shield. All the tax savings we get every single year. Well, it would be nice to know what they are every single year so we can find the net present value of all of that this year. That's a benefit to us, right? Depreciation is a non-cash expense but is tax deductible. Therefore, it will have an impact on cash flow. So let me give you uh, just a, a, an example here of what I mean. We'll go uh, with, uh, let's say we have 100000 in depreciation in a given year and our tax rate is 30%. We have a 30% tax rate. Therefore, we will end up with $30,000 in saved, not savings, in saved cash outflows. Because at the end of the year, remember now in cash, in our cash flows, uh, for net present value purposes, we did include this hundred. We did not include the hundred thousand because it's a non-cash expense. We don't deduct a non-cash expense. We don't. Sorry, we don't find the net present value of something that's not a cash flow. But this non-cash expense does result in an impact on cash flow. If our tax rate is 30%, we save $30,000 in tax that we normally would pay. So by having this $100,000 depreciation, which doesn't affect our net present value for a project, 
it does indirectly in the fact that, hey, at the end of the year, you would have had to pay this 30000 if you didn't have the depreciation. So this actually, in a roundabout way, does affect our cash flows. Well, we don't want to start mixing these cash flows up here with these hidden cash flows down here, which is why when we do an example, you'll see that we do it in two steps. We'll do step one to adjust uh, all of our after-tax costs and after-tax benefits. Then we'll take care of the tax shield. So we can basically make a statement here that our tax savings is equal to our tax rate times the CCA rate. It's that tax rate times the CCA rate. There's the uh, there's the our, our thirty percent tax rate on the hundred thousand depreciation. This hundred thousand might have been a result of a CCA rate of uh, a forty percent on two hundred and fifty thousand dollar asset. But if we want to know how much we're saving, we need to know how much we're we're deducting, how much our CCA allowance is for that year, and the T will be the the, the tax that we would have paid if we didn't have that. So let's go into this tax shield a bit more because it's a bit more complicated than what, I've, than what I've shown you just here. All right, so our CCA or our capital cost allowance is the maximum rate that's allowed by the government. We may be taking 10% a year. The government might be saying, no, it's only 8%. But it actually works differently. There is no straight line depreciation with CCA. Everything is based on a declining balance or what's called an undepreciated capital cost. So we take our undepreciated capital cost times our CCA rate, and that is our maximum deduction for the year. Any additions or improvements we make go to the asset pool altogether. Not just every, we don't calculate uh, this rate on every individual asset. We group a bunch of assets into a pool and we take the CCA rate on the entire pool. So any additions or improvements go to the asset pool, but we have to follow the half year rule which means that any new addition to the pool, the original pool gets its full CCA rate, but any additions, we only get half of it for the year. The undepreciated capital cost of any additions or improvements times the CCA rate times a half. That'll become important. So that sounds confusing, right? Everything works better with an example. So let's take an example where we buy an asset for $30,000. As soon as we buy it, that is our undepreciated capital cost is $30,000. The government says, well, the rate for that type of asset is 30% per year. That's your CCA, your capital cost allowance is 30%. And this company is in, has a 40% tax rate. So we want to find the present value of all the tax savings if we have a weighted average cap cost of capital of 10%. So this is how it works. The CCA rate is 30% of the undepreciated capital cost. So 30% of 30,000 is 9,000. But... This is the first year we have it, so it's the half year rule. So we actually have a CCA allowance of $4,500 that year. So we can deduct $4,500 off our income. Since we pay tax at 40%, it actually saves us $1,800 in tax. So if we want to find the net present value of this $1,800, remember this is at the end of the year, we discounted backwards one year at 10%, we'll get $1,636. So having this asset, this $30,000 asset, allows us to take a capital cost allowance of $4,500 in the first year, which will save us $1,800 in tax, which actually provides us with positive net present value. Well, what do we do in the second year? Well, we've taken $4,500 off, so we really only have $25,500 left. That's our undepreciated capital cost is $25,500. That's all we can write off now. We take 30% of that. We get $7,650. Notice that we're in the second year, so we don't have to follow the half year rule. We take 7650. So if we can deduct 7650 and we pay 40%, we'll save $33,060 in tax. Discounting that back two years, because we're in the second year now at 10%, will give us a net present value of 2528. Well, this 7650 is already used up, so we don't have 255 left. We have 17850 left. We take 30% of that, we'll get 5,355. That's what we can deduct from income, which will save us $2,142 in year three in tax we would have paid. The present value of that is 1609, and we take 2142 divided by 1.1 to the power of three. That'll discount it backwards. And you can see on and on and on and on we go. 
Well, that's going to be rather complicated to keep adding that up. Imagine that, that you have to keep going. There's 1785 left, so we do another year and another year and another year and so on and so on. Uh, it's going to take a long time to figure out what the net present value of all that is. But here's the thing. We have a series. We have a geometric series. And if you remember from high school algebra, if you're taking a course called Relations and Functions, you'll find that, that we can express the result of a geometric series with one equation. So we can find the, all of these things, rather than calculating them all out, we can find them directly with a formula that says the present value is C D T over D plus K times 1 plus 0.5 K over 1 plus K. Well, that looks complicated, right? Let me break it down for you, and you're going to see that, oh, that's not complicated at all. So C, what is C? Well, C is our cost. There's our 30000 what is D? Well, D is our 30%, our, our capital cost allowance. And what is T? T is our tax rate. So if we multiply the top out, what do we get? We get 30,000 times 30% times 40%. In other words, 30,000 times 30%. That means we can deduct $9,000. If we pay 40% tax, that will be $3,600 we get to save in the first year. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about the half year rule? Well, there's the half right there. I'll get to this in a second. We're just going to find the present value of this $30,000 depreciated forever at this CCA rate at that tax rate. So that's all that is on the top. On the bottom, we have our uh, CCA rate and we have our cost of capital. So this will give us a present value for deducting a $30,000 asset, the tax shield of this $30,000 asset, all the saved taxes that we wouldn't have to pay. But we got a half year rule. So what we do is we multiply, we multiply it by one plus half of our weighted average cost of capital divided by our weighted average cost of capital. This is called a correction factor. This is called a correction factor. Uh, it is a correction factor for the half year rule. Now, if you're in a territory where there is no half year rule, you don't need the correction factor. You just need this first term. That'll give you the present value of all of these till this is zero. It'll keep going and going and going. So this is a shortcut. Rather than doing this all the time, we just have to remember CDT over D plus K. And then, of course, our correction factor is 1 plus 0.5K over 1 plus K. The more you write this out, the more it gets ingrained in your, in your brain. So there's the present value of all the tax savings uh, that are not included in cash flow. So this is called our CCA tax shield. That's step two. We calculate our CCA tax shield separately from the present value of our cash flows, and then we just add them together. So again, uh, this is what we ended up with. This is the formula we can use for a geometric series. Uh, rather than calculating the undepreciated capital cost and the tax uh, savings every year for how many years, we just use this. Then if there's a half year rule involved, we adjust it by the correction factor. The sum of all of this will give us the present value of the tax shield. That has nothing to do with our cash with the, with the cash flow line that we drew before. This is just the present value of the tax shield because depreciation is a non-cash expense. It's not going to be included in our cash flow timeline. We calculate this separately. However, it assumes no salvage value. This will depreciate this asset to zero. Well, what if we sell it? What if there is a, a salvage value? Well, then the salvage value would have a value. Notice that if the present value of the cost of the asset is CDT over D plus K, the present value of the salvage value must be SDT over D plus K. We just changed the cost to the salvage value. But look at this. When we incur the cost, we incur it here at the beginning of the time frame. When we sell it, we have a salvage value here. So this formula will give us a dollar value as of this date. We need to bring it back to this point, which is 1 plus k to the negative n. And remember, 1 plus k to the negative n is the same as 1 over 1 plus k to the power n. Well, that's just discounting, right? So we're taking whatever this is, getting a dollar value here, and this term is just discounting it back to this date. So we have the present value up here of the entire tax shield. From that, we will subtract the present value of the salvage value because once we sell it, we can no longer depreciate it. So if we buy an asset for 30000 
and we have a salvage value of 6, this formula at the top will give us the present value of the full 30,000. This will give us the present value of the 6,000 because we can only deduct 24. So we take the present value of the 30,000 minus the present value of the 6 leaves us just the present value of the 24. Again, everything looks better uh, uh, with a vodka martini and an example. So pour yourself a vodka martini and have a look at this example. The cost of the asset is $30,000. We're just taking an example. Let's say we can buy an asset for $30,000. It has a CCE rate of 38% or 30%. The tax rate of the company is 40%, and the company's weighted average cost of capital is 10%. So, we can figure out what the present value of the full tax shield is in this case, with this formula. Because here's our half-year rule, we're making the adjustment for the half-year rule, here's the present value of the whole thing. So, it would be 30,000 times our CCA rate times our tax rate divided by our our CCA rate plus our working our weighted average cost of capital D D plus K so divided by 0.4 that's just the present value of everything but we have a half year rule so it'll be 1.05 it's half of the weighted average cost of capital divided by the weighted average cost of capital and what will that give us that'll give us 9,000 times 0.95455 or $8,591. So, this will add to the net, ve net present value of any project, it will add $8,591 because the net present value calculation does not take depreciation into consideration and depreciation will result in a tax savings net present valued or present valued of $8,591. Well, let's say that we have a salvage value of 6,000 and we're going to sell it after five years. This represents the full 30,000. We can't take the full 30,000 because we're going to sell it for six. So now we got to figure out, well, what's the six worth today? And then we'll take it off of that. So we just have to trust the formula. And what's the formula we had? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take 8591 minus the salvage value, which is SDT over d plus k times 1 plus k to the negative n. And we just have to fill that in. Equals 85.91 minus, what are we selling it for? $6,000. Our CCA rate is 0.3. Our tax rate is 0.4. d plus k, as we know, is 0.4 times 1.10 to the negative 5, because it's 5 years which will give us 85.91 minus 1117.66. So when we sell it for $6,000, if we were going to figure out, if, if we were going to take this $6,000 and say, well, what if we bought an asset for $6,000? What would be, if, if we used the $6,000 in this case, we would end up with a, with a higher amount than 11.1766. We would end up with this amount up here. The reason we get 11.17.66 is we, we've got to discount it backwards five years. So that gives us 74.73.34. So whatever project we take on, once we figure out what the net present value of those cash flows are, we would add another 74.73 onto that net present value to account for our tax shield. Isn't that beautiful?